Um, it's going to run in two halves, really. So we're going to spend a bit of time talking to you and giving you a bit of information that we think might be helpful. And then we're really going to open it out to you and you can ask your questions. I'm joined by our lovely degree staff team and some of our student reps. So do absolutely ask them questions. Um, I've got, I'm going to go around. So we've got Adrian Porter, who is our, yes, give us a wave, lovely. He's our head of degree delivery. And then we've got Michaela O'Connor and we've got Martha Harrison and they are both our foundation degree year managers. Um, and then we've got Stevie um, who's doing all the admitting there. He is our head of academic administration and student support. And then in terms of our students, our reps, we've got our first year student Felix. We've got Lucy in second year. And we've got Maisie, who is in our final BA year. So those three are on the course right now. So they will be as honest as they want to be. So definitely ask them questions when it comes to it. Okay, great. If, as I say, we're gonna do questions in the second half, but if anything comes to mind, feel free to pop it in the chat box at any time. And then I will do my best to kind of get through them all in the second half. Great, okay, hopefully everyone's here. I'm gonna pass over to Adrian, he's gonna kick us off. Thank you. Hi everyone, can, firstly, can everyone hear me? Is that good? Cool. So, um, hi, as Joe, thank you, Joe. Um, as Joe's mentioned, I'm the head of degree delivery. And uh, I guess my role is, is actually uh, alongside the year managers between, between us and, yeah, between us, we manage the actual delivery of the program. We deliver a lot of the content or we work with the teachers that help to deliver a lot of the content. Um, we deal with uh, rescheduling. Uh, this pandemic is a really classic example of that. We've had to be doing a, quite a lot of uh, rejigging of the, of the program in order to make sure that we can still deliver what the, uh, the program says or the course says. So, um, First things first, I wanted to say that detailed module outlines and specifications are on our website. Uh, so those are the official documentations that, that tell you what our course is about. Um, so I would absolutely advise that you kind of go, go to the website, have a look at those and, you know, we welcome any questions. Um, there are no silly ones, but um, I think First of all, the three years in a, in a nutshell is kind of geared towards two, two main objectives or say suitcases. Um, one is a technical objective. So it's about uh, your technique in, your, in the circus discipline. It's about technique in movement. It's about technique in theatre. Um, the other one is a creative one. And it's about you being able to explore your creative process using current practitioners that, that are currently out there and, and working um, and the analysis of that. And you're the common denominator or the connector between those two suitcases. And hopefully the, the idea is that when you leave the program, you'll be able to either create your own work or work creatively with another, um, with a, another company uh, to work as a teacher, to have an appreciation of the technical aspects of production, et cetera, et cetera, but also the business aspects. So the, uh, the courses split, there are two actual courses. So there's a foundation um, degree, and then there's the BA, and they are separate. Um, the, I'll start with the foundation degree. So that's split into the two years. Um, the introduction, it's an introduction in the first year to almost all of the elements of the circus course that we, that we have on the foundation degree. Um, and I'll go into a little bit more detail of that. Um, the second year is what we would call a transition year, which is where you begin to take all of those different elements of the circus course in the first year and begin to start thinking about how you would want to bring these elements together based on your own objectives and your own needs. 
it's this second year that we also start the, the, the idea of the business of being in the circus industry, whether it's about uh, writing arts to council application forms, whether it's um, pitching an idea to a producer, uh, whether it's about creating your own show, whether it's about creating your own work. So that's the foundation year, uh, foundation course in a nutshell. The BA year uh, is about your autonomy to be able to apply everything that you've learned in the FD1 year and the FD2 year in the foundation program. Um, in yeah, so your ability to apply that independently. The transition between the FD course and the BA course, there are two criteria currently, and um, Stevie, correct me if I'm wrong here. Uh, one is the completion uh, of the foundation degree to an, uh, to an appropriate standard and completion as in pass. And also just to say that the, the foundation degree is a pass fail only, okay? Um, the other criteria for passing into the third year, the BA year, is is basically uh, an assessment by the HE team of your suitability for entrance into the BA year. And the reason why it's set up like that is because we need to, the, the objective for the BA year is that you adopt a really high level of autonomy in your creative practice, in your technical practice. And this is a super, super important aspect of moving into the industry. Because when you move into the industry, obviously, you're not necessarily on your own, but actually a lot of your work needs to be self-motivated, whether you're working alone or whether you're working with somebody else. So when it comes to the content of each year, um, the first year, as I said, is the introduction. And essentially, the content is, is very similar from the first year to the second year to the third year. But the criteria by which we assess it changes. So in the first year, as I said, it's the introduction. Um, you will be doing a, uh, a specialization or going through a specialization process, which uh, Martha and Mikhaila will be taking you through later on. On top of this, you'll be looking at uh, preparatory um, skills, so physical preparation, whether it's um, Pilates, whether it's warm ups, whether it's um, strength and conditioning, um, a lot of kinesthetic work. Uh, we also have theatre components, we have movement components, uh, and in the second term, actually, of the, of the first year, you'll start to look at critical analysis of work. So that's basically class based. Uh, well, it's actually a mixture of class-based and practical, but the class-based analysis is super important because that's when we start to introduce you to practitioners that are currently out there. And I'll go a little bit more into that in a bit. Um, there'll also be uh, performances. Uh, some of them will be linked to the modules that you'll be doing, either in movement or theatre, and some of them will be linked as a, so in the in the second term, the first years we'll be doing an ensemble project. And this is assessed and it is performed in front of a live audience. Um, in the second year, you will have chosen your discipline and that will be your circus discipline that you, that you work with for the rest of that term, or for the rest of that year, sorry. Um, as well as that, you will continue with theatre, you will continue with movement. Um, we will also add to that the, um, the business, the, the business side of the circus industry. So in the second year, we look at circus production and uh, circus producing and production management. Um, and in the BA year, we look at actually creating a business plan. Uh, you continue with your critical analysis of practitioners um, and of circus, uh, but we will be using uh, movement practitioners at times, we will be using theatre practitioners at, at times to inform that analysis. Uh, in the second year, you'll be doing a devised performance in front of a live audience, and you'll be doing an ensemble performance in front of a live audience. 
uh, in the BA year, we're really looking at how you synthesize all of these, all of the last, the last two years of work. So again, you'll be doing your circus disciplines, you'll be doing theatre, but when we look at theatre, we'll be looking at the notion of you being a director. So looking at uh, an appreciation of the role of a director, what it is to be directed and what it is to be a director, which we think is a super, super important um, aspect of being a professional. You'll continue with your movement. Uh, and as I said before, you'll be doing a business plan um, in which you will receive a mentor that uh, will be assigned to you for the duration of the independent study that you'll be doing inside that. And then the other thing would be the performances, which is a device performance and an ensemble performance. The device performance is normally in the spring term and the ensemble performance is normally in the, um, in the autumn term. So that's the three years in a, in a kind of like roundabout way. Obviously there's a lot more detail to that, but what we can tell you that it does prepare you for is it prepares you for the ability to look after yourself um, in a physical, but also an emotional way. Um, all of the work that you would do over those three years are designed for you to be able to make choices for yourself, for your training or for your creativity. And this is linked to the notion of longevity. And it's super, super important that, that you are able to maintain your bodies throughout your, the career, your career, um, but also to be able to shift. So we've had students that have finished the program with us or the course with us and have gone on to do directing or have gone on to become riggers. So having that kind of that rounded view of, of the circus industry is basically what we're trying to do. Um, yeah, so uh, the other thing that we're looking at is making sure that you developed creatively, not just your own creativity, so the creativity that's generated out of your own mind and your own inspirations, but also the creativity that, that somebody else gives you. So if you're working with a director and they give you their inspiration, how do you actually work with that? How do you unpick it? How do you move it forwards? And, and that again is really, really important. So as an artist, we're not trying to create artists that only appreciate one side of the, uh, of the, the stage or the process, the creative process. Um, we're also, one of our aims would be to prepare you to critically assess not just your work, but other people's work in a positive and a, um, in an open way and a, a, a constructive way. That's super, super important. Um, developing understanding of the production process um, and the business side of the circus landscape. And you know, you possibly have quite a few questions around that because I would say that that, that part is, is probably one of the areas that a lot of people don't think about when it comes to a circus degree. There is written work in all of the years. So it's not purely a physical course. There is a lot of thinking that is required. There's a lot of essay writing that is required. However, there is also a lot of support that students get either through, um, through the HE team or through the mentors that they have for certain modules or through the other, the other performers or practitioners, the professionals that uh, frequent the building. Uh, there are creative tasks left, right and center in the first and the second and the third year. Um, there's a mixture of teacher-led and self-directed learning in pretty much all of the modules. That's, that's really, really important that, that, that you understand that yes, the teacher will be lecturing or guiding. However, the expectation is that you have your, you create your own independent learning um, tasks and that can be done in conjunction with the teacher. Obviously, as you get to the third year, the ratio of support that is expected changes. So in the first year, the support is, is high in comparison. In the second year, 
that's where we discuss the transition of what you want to do and how you want to move forwards. And in the third year, that's where you actually, the expectation is that the student approaches us to discuss what their ideas are and how they want to move forwards. Um, I think one thing that we want to do in this programme is to challenge people's perceptions of what performance is and what circus can be and what it could be and also what it was. I think that's super, super important in terms of unpicking the potential and the possibilities of circus. Um, and as I said before, the appreciation on the production process uh, and also the health and safety aspects. So there's, there are aspects of the, um, of the course where you'll be working with the technical department to look at all of the technical uh, considerations if you become an aerialist, for instance, because they are quite huge and they're quite far reaching. Um, I think that's it for me. Um, should I, I think what I will do right now is pass over to Martha and Michaela, who can talk about the specialization process, which happens in the, uh, in the autumn term of the first year. Hi everyone. Um, really, really nice to see you all. Um, so Michaela and I have a very similar job and we will be working with you quite a lot in the first year. So a lot of questions that we get um, in the audition, just before the audition is about the specialization process. So I've actually created a really fantastic PowerPoint to show you. So I'm just gonna share screen now. Okay, here's some classic um, examples of uh, amazing duos, which me and Michaela actually are. Um, so we are going to go through a week in the life of an FD1 student. We're gonna be talking about the specialization process, which is where you decide um, which discipline you want to do. We'll go quickly over the space protocol and arrangement, and then we'll have some questions, although we might have to wait a little bit longer to do questions whilst Joe wraps up the next section. So here you go. So in your weeks as a uh, FD1 student, you'll have a few things going on. So you're gonna have um, theater, you're gonna have movement. As you move along, you're also gonna have theory, and then you're gonna have a lot of these preparatory classes. So they include acrobatics, aerial, juggling, Pilates, conditioning, handstands and flexibility. So you'll have that kind of running through your course. And then we'll do these discipline taster classes. So you'll get to try out quite a few different disciplines. So at, at some point we'll say, what is it that you want to try? And you'll be able to choose like three, say, or four to try out. And, but you might actually already know exactly what you want to do. So you might come in knowing what you want to do. And we'll kind of go through a process of trying these things out. You'll have classes with specialist teachers and we'll kind of come to an agreement about which would be a really good idea for you to do, which discipline it would be. So here's a list, there's quite a few. I'm actually sure there's more. Um, we've just put down everything uh, on this list that we can think of. So there's the aerial disciplines, um, you know, trapeze, single point, doubles trapeze, hoop, rope, silks, straps, all of these. And then we've got the acrobatic discipline. So hand to hand, Chinese pole, acro dance, hand balancing, banking, and then there's the juggling and manipulation. So ball club, ring juggling, hula hoops, there's obviously absolutely loads. So the one area that's a little bit more tricky is the big space. So there's some disciplines that we've got on our course, which obviously require quite a lot of space. So the sear wheel, as an example, or teeter board, trick bike, tight wire, this kind of thing. And for those ones, you actually have to be specifically asked to try out on them. Because if every single student decided to do sear wheel, it would actually would just would not fit into our space. So there are a number of things that you can do, but if you wanted to do one of these bigger ones, it would be um, a kind of negotiation between uh, the teachers and yourselves. Okay, over the the autumn term as part of this module, we're looking at it's, you have sessions with a teacher. We go through the process of figuring out if that's what you want to do, if the teacher thinks this is a good idea for you. And as I said before, there's the big space discipline options are invite only. 
you also have to kind of think about with within these disciplines we do have to see whether there's teacher availability we have to think about the space rest restrictions and also the ability your ability to do that um just to say that there's a few things that we're actually not offering at the moment which are swinging trapeze cloud swing german wheel korean cradle these things that take up absolutely loads of space we can't actually do them right now so just to give you a a warning on that. This is a picture of our absolutely fantastic, beautiful, massive space. Um, but just so that you know, as you, when you go into the building, you think, oh, this is huge, there's so much space. But as we try to put everything into it, obviously the space becomes less and less. So I just wanted to show you quickly how the space is divided up. So we've got, I'm showing you this schedule. I don't know if you can see, but the in the morning between nine o'clock and one o'clock we have all degree classes that's just for us in the middle of the day there's other programs using our space so that would be the professionals would come in to use a little bit of space in the middle of the day between two and four then it comes back to us so it's degree program time and then between four and six we kind of share the space although obviously in our awful COVID moment we're not doing that right now and then the, the students leave at six o'clock so we've got this massive amount of space but actually it is a sh it's shared between three different departments so um it's not entirely used by the degree program just as a as a warning yeah that's basically all I've got but Michaela might wish to um say a few more things what do you think Michaela Hello everyone, that was excellent Martha, well done. I have absolutely nothing to add, other than just to make sure, Jos and Veronica, are you in the same building because it's freaking me out, your two cameras? Or is that a different person? <laughs> Hang on, and there's three, oh my, and Ellen, are you all in the same house? Or you've got twin sisters? Okay, good, great. That's all that was worrying me. It's so great to see you all and it's a shame, uh, yeah, we can't be live. Although I was just speaking to a, a, a student and I was quite scary live. So look out for me if you do see me in the flesh because I am quite frightening. So luckily you just got me 2D. Sorry, back to, yes, yeah, specialization, very good. I mean, I rushed now. through that a little bit, but if later when Joe has, if you have questions about that, you can always ask us anything. We are available for you. Over to you, Jay. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the application and audition process, which many of you might be thinking about going through. Um, so if you want to apply, you need to go directly to our website and you need to fill in our online application form. So for the course starting this September, the deadline is the 15th of March by one o'clock. So just give that a little note down. Um, so you need to fill in the form and then there is a £25 application fee which you um, need to pay at the end. However, there are fee waivers available and there are exemptions. So do look out for that. And if that applies to you, obviously don't pay the fee. Once we've received the form, I'll then process it and I'll contact you directly about our audition and give you some more important information. So the audition itself, obviously in a normal world, we would normally invite you to come to our building and you take part in physical workshops um, with us. But obviously this year, because of COVID, we've had to move everything online just to try and stop people unnecessarily traveling to our building. Now, this is something we did last year. So we're feeling confident. We know what we're doing. So you absolutely have nothing to worry about. The deadline for the video audition this year is the 7th of April. So you've still got plenty of time if you're thinking about doing that to start thinking about your videos. So in terms, I'm gonna focus on the video, um, but uh, what, what you'll need to do is create a video um, and you'll need to upload it to either YouTube or Vimeo or another secure platform. Uh, that you'll then send me the access link and I'll share it with our panel. So ideally it should be one link, not lots of separate video clips, just to make it um, a bit easier for the panel when it comes to watching them all. As part of your audition invite, I'll send you a very detailed document which will include everything you need to put in your video and it should hopefully help, 
help you and it also includes assessment criteria so you can really think about what the panel are looking for but I'll quickly go through what we have so it's essentially three sections and an introduction so as part of the intro we just ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself and it's really important obviously doing it online because we can't meet you physically so just really informally a bit about yourself what you're interested in and what your background is then we go into the first section, which is um, it covers acrobatics and flexibility. So we're really kind of focusing more so on your technical skills in the first section. And essentially, it's a list of exercises which we ask you to film yourself doing. Um, and there's also a bit of an acrobatic sequence in there, which is a bit more open to your own interpretation but otherwise it's lots of exercises and we've tried to include um, some video clips this year to give you a bit more of an idea of what we're asking for. Then the second section is a presentation so you can start to be a bit more creative here. We ask you to perform a one and a half minute piece of your own devising. So you can choose music, you can put a costume to it, have some props, it's entirely up to you. And what we really want to encourage you to do this year is to tell us a bit about the piece. So what's your idea behind it? And, and yeah, where has it come from? What's the stimulus behind the work? So we ask you to talk a little bit about that before you then show us your one and a half minute performance piece. And the main focus for that section is very much on your creativity, your originality, your expression, and your performing your performance skills. And then finally, there's a third section, but it's completely optional. You don't have to include it and it won't go against you, but it's essentially a chance for you to include um, footage which you don't feel like you've been able to so far. So anything that you think might be relevant to your application. So you can include up to two minutes of juggling or manipulation skills, and or you can include another two minutes of what, whatever you think is relevant. So it could be martial arts, it could be dance, a bit of gymnastics, physical theatre, music, anything that you think, you know, is you and, and would be good for us to see. And that's it. So it's, it's not loads. You've got time to prepare it. And um, what I would say is obviously we're completely understanding that in COVID, everyone's in very different living situations. So if you're in a space where you feel like you can't do what you would have done, please get in touch with me and we will um, in some cases accept pre-existing performance footage. So just be aware of that, but please do try and stick to the time limits that we give you. So that's one of my tips, definitely stick to the time limits because the panel have lots of videos to get through. Um, the other thing I would say is really follow the order. Obviously, we've got the intro, section one, section two, section three, um, and try and, and follow that. Don't worry about like, providing lots of fancy edits. Just make it clean and simple. We're not assessing you. Obviously, we don't expect you to be amazing videographers or anything like that. So don't worry about that. And try not to force exercises. We're really just looking for your potential. We just want to see you giving things a go. So try not get too scared and, uh, over the things that we're asking for. And definitely look through the assessment criteria that's, that I'll send you in the documents. So you can start to see, obviously, what the panel will be looking for. And then finally, with the video, obviously, if you've got any access requirements, do let me know and we'll absolutely make reasonable adjustments for you. And then the second stage, so once you've, you've sent in your videos, the panel have looked at them, they will then shortlist applicants for an online interview. And you'll come to an interview with a few of our um, team members. And that'll be via Zoom probably, and it's about 20 minutes. So what happens next? So if, you, if you're successful, I would send you an offer letter and then you'd have a period of time to kind of decide whether you wanna come here. And then if you do decide you want to come here, we'll start the registry process, really. And part of that is we'll add you to a Facebook group so you can get to know other people that are in your um, year. And also, I usually add the reps, our lovely reps, to that group so you can start asking them questions as well. You'll also need to start thinking about, obviously, how you're going to fund your studies. So I'm going to talk briefly about Brexit and visas because I know it might be relevant to some of you here. Um, and this year is the first year where there are quite big changes that you should be aware of. So unfortunately, as the UK has now left the EU, this does affect study requirements if you are an EU, an EEA or a Swiss student coming to study here. 
So basically, if you're not covered by withdrawal agreements, you will be now classed as an overseas student and you'll have to pay um, overseas fees. And as part of that, you'll also need to apply for a student visa and you won't be eligible for a student loan. So it's just to make it super clear. Obviously, if, you're, if you've got pre-settled or settled status and you, you meet the government residency requirements, you may, you may still be a home fee student, but it's just to make that super clear. The visa process itself is nothing scary. Um, it's something that we can support you with as best possible. So on that note, I think I'm gonna hand you over to Stevie, who's gonna talk a little bit about student support. Hi, yes, yes I am. And we're here to support all of our students from the minute you think, hmm, I think I'd like to do circus, to the minute that you leave and become a circus extraordinaire person. Um, we have quite a few things that we can uh, do for you. I'd say that what happens is once you've been successful and registered to take the, the course, in the first induction week you will be screened for any learning dif uh, differences. Um, this is done by our resident student support manager Antigone Exton white um, and myself and depending on the results of that, then we can start offering you whatever support packages are useful for you. That could include um, support from the Disabled Student Allowance from the Student Loans Company, which will provide you with laptops or equipment that uh, you can use to help with writing. Um, and or one-to-one -one student support, academic support. Um, or we may be able to create individual learning plans for you where you'll be able to have a bit longer time to submit essays um, uh, and have some extra support when writing those essays. Uh, another thing that we will do is provide study skills lessons, which will talk you through sort of the um, transition into higher education learning, uh, writing essay skills, referencing, looking at how to do referencing, in an academic way um, and academic organization. Um, that's something that will be part of your timetabled lessons uh, during the first year of your course. Um, I'm reading my little thing that I just wrote down and I can't read my handwriting. So obviously I need some study skills. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think basically, so they, they have two tranches. So we have academic support. And then the other thing that we have is obviously wellbeing support such as mental health and um, uh, physical support. Uh, again, that's um, myself and Antigone lead that up. So you can come and talk to us at any time about any issues that you might be having. Um, and we can signpost you or give you advice, advice to support that you can access. We have um, some companies that we use outside of the school, uh, one being Problem Shared, who is a counselling service that we can refer you to if needs be. Um, and we also have uh, links with local GPs. Um, we also offer nutritional advice and you'll, as part of your induction, we'll have a um, lecture with a nutritionist who will help guide you on how to eat well so that you can perform at the best of your abilities. Um, if you're injured physically, we have a physical support team who will be able to also help you with some triage and some ideas on how to uh, heal fast um, and they'll provide you with uh, plans, support plans for that. Um, and then I think the other thing was financial support. We do have some financial support that we can offer. We have a hardship fund that should you find that you are uh, in need of a bit of an extra cash injection, then you can apply for that as well and we'll support you as much as we can. Um, there is also some conservatoire for dance and drama scholarships that are available for next year at least. Beyond that, we're not too sure. Um, but for next year, there, there may be some uh, scholarship support that you can get. This is something that will happen when you apply for your student fees if you're uh, using student loans company and it's done automatically. So you don't actually have to do anything. You'll just be granted it if you're eligible. But we'll talk more about that sort of nearer the time. But that's just some of the support that we can offer. I did that super quick because I wanted to get back up to time, sorry. <laughs> Lovely, thank you. 
So yeah, we've done lots of talking. We're going to use the rest of the time really to open the questions up to you. So I think the easiest way is obviously you can decide, you can use the chat box, you can put your question in there, or you can use the little raise hand function if you want to speak as well. Um, obviously there's the staff members that are here and there's also Lucy, Felix and May Maisie, our students, who you can answer questions to, but I'll do my best to signpost to the people that I think are most appropriate. So yes, let's, um, we'll open it to you. Susanna, I think Susanna's got a question. Yeah, hi. Um, so you mentioned uh, something about students being well-rounded and having a lot of options. Um, I'm wondering, are the academic courses kind of only centering on circus or are there basic requirements as well? What do they look like? Um, who should we have? Would uh, Lucy, do you want to talk a bit about the academic side of the course? Yeah, of course I can do. So um, uh, like Adrian said, there is a big, well, it's not, I wouldn't even say big, but there is a definite academic component. There is essay writing. There is theory, critical analysis, creative and critical thinking. Um, but again, as Stevie mentioned, there is a whole world of support available for that. Um, and I personally, through all of the essays that I've had, through all of the theory that I've had to do, I have found that it, it, it definitely links in to what we're doing practically, and it really does support it. So none of it feels irrelevant. And I know that there are lots of people in my year who felt, you know, for various reasons, some of them English isn't their first language, some of them uh, have various learning differences, and so they were very nervous about the academic side of the course, but um, they've all got through it really, really well, and they've all had good support as far as I'm aware, and um, so I think what you're asking about it being well-rounded, the academic side adds to that rather than it being like a separate tack on it's all part and parcel of the same thing and it all links i hope that answers the question thank you and darcy i think you've got a question uh yes i do just a bit more of a technical one um for the video audition section three I'm a little confused. I'm looking at the uh, place on the website. It says that there's no more than two minutes you can put in juggling or some sort of manipulation like that. Mm -hmm. And then it says relevant additional skills. You can add up to two minutes. So is section three, four minutes, or does that mean you can do two minutes of either or? So essentially it's four minutes, but obviously- Oh, if, okay. Yeah, if you're not a juggler, then you probably wouldn't include that two minutes and you just yeah. do the two minutes. So it's two minutes of juggling or manipulation skills and then and or so you could do either or or you can do both two minutes of something else basically whatever else you think might be relevant. Perfect thank you. Let's see and I think we've got a question for Liberty who's asking what are the requirements for the devised audition piece for example is it dance or something else so I think Liberty is talking about the presentation um, I wonder if, Michaela, do you want to talk a little bit about the presentation? Yes, uh, it could be dance. It's what, what you're comfortable with, um, really. And it's, it's about you expressing yourself and, in, you know, enjoying it and not feeling, um, yeah, don't put any pressure on yourself with it. Just have a lot of fun with it, really. Um, it's because because we can't see you, it's just about getting as much information about you as possible um, to how your creativity works. Um, and, uh, you know, we just want to see you. So, yeah, it could be it could be dance. I think just, just to add to that, one thing that we really, really um, look at is, is people's physicality, like the kinesthetic connection, the connection with their body, um, whether it's dance, whether it's acrobatics, et cetera, et cetera. So, Lovely. I think, did Aaron have their hand up? Aaron, did you? 
Yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, so I'm I've I've already applied to audition, but um, with like COVID and everything that's happening in the world at the moment, I'm not sure if I will like if I get in, would I be able to defer and go the next year, or would I have to audition again? If that makes sense. <laughs> yes. Good question. I wonder, Stevie, would you like to answer that one? Sure. Um, we uh, no. Basically, <laughs> you can't defer to next year at this moment. Um, so I would say that, um, uh, it, yeah, if you get in this year, then then you should attempt to come this year. If you think that actually you might want to wait, then I would say audition next year instead. Um, can I just add to that? I was thinking about deferring um, when I was aud auditioning. Um, and I'm really glad that I didn't, just because if I did defer, then I would have just been kind of sitting in my house instead of doing what bits we can do, uh, given the situation uh, with COVID in the degree, I was would have just been sitting around, but yeah. Thank you, Felix. So there's actually another question around COVID, so maybe that'll tie in. Phoebe's asking, how is the school dealing and working around COVID? I wonder, Maisie, if you could talk a little bit about how you found it on the course? Um, so far with how we've dealt with COVID? Yeah, for sure. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, okay. Um, so I was, uh, I started in uh, 2018. So I was at the school pre-COVID and during and obviously now. Um, I think that the, obviously the main difference is that all of the classes that could be online are online. So the theoretical classes we've started doing online and um, now what sort of happens is we get um, things like Pilates, handstands and conditioning, uh, or like the general classes or the, what are they called? The complementary classes. They're still delivered online as well. Um, the great thing about how these are being managed is that space is taken into account really well and access to equipment. So um, it's not, no one's expected to have like pull up bars or weights or anything in their house. Like we're, we've been working around that and, um, um, working on just like using what you have um I won't I won't lie it's devastating not being able to do shows to a live audience but what we have done um for for when I was in second year we did two shows online um an ensemble show and uh, an individual device piece show and um we were just sort of given the opportunity to experiment with video editing changing up our discipline um looking into sort of what we could do with what we had and like it's it, it's it's a challenging thing to do but it, it works quite well and the support also in um changing up our discipline to fit has worked like really really well and i also just jump in and quickly add to the end of that um it's been a real like like me said it's been devastating to not be able to you know be in the space and be doing our shows but as again, as someone who was at the school just about pre-COVID, um, uh, it's it's been really interesting to do this transition. And I think what's been really good that the school have done is rather than try and give us what we had before in a way which isn't really possible in terms of we a lot of us don't have access to our disciplines, we can't do that. What they have focused on is what we can do in this time and giving us skills that are still going to be very relevant and very useful. For example, lots of stuff with editing, with filming, because even when, you know, even when we do eventually come out of this pandemic and live performance does come back, virtual and screen based work is still going to be extremely relevant and the school have done a really good job of giving us some really good skills in that area. Amazing, thank you. Um, Rosie, you've got your hand up, thank you. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I just had a question about um, part-time work and what your thoughts were about um, putting a bit of work in alongside your studies or whether you would advise not. Yeah, good question. and probably best for the students actually and I know Lucy you had a job didn't you while you were on the course do you want to talk a little bit how you found that yeah um this I think it's a very individual thing I think um if you can find a job that you can manage well around it and it work and you can make it work do but I think you've just got to just know your priorities 
And so for me, I have my job, but my degree, the circus training is always my priority. Um, I'm very lucky to have a job that's freelance, so I don't have to ask for holiday or worry about holiday. I, you know, I can, I just take shifts when I can. So I know that if we've got rehearsals on, I just don't take shifts in that time. And I'm very lucky to be able to do that. Um, but there are plenty of people who do have shift jobs at weekends. You know, some of my fellow students need it um, and they make it work. It can be really hard. But again, there's lots of support available. And Stevie and Antigone are amazing. Thank you. Um, oh, can I add? Oh, yes, go for it. Go for it. Um, in um, first year, I, I found it really, really difficult to get a job because I thought that was what I was going to do. But there's lots of like zero hours contract jobs that you can get in London. And these are really, really great because like Lucy said, when you have rehearsal periods and stuff, I was just coming home and sleeping from like five o'clock because I just couldn't do anything else. <laughs> so it's nice to have a job where you can pick your hours if you can get one of them. And then I'd say in second and third year, it's been easier. Like I have a like a waitressing job now and have for a couple months and it's been fine. So it, you can grow into it, but first year is a shock and you will be tired. So just a warning. <laughs> yeah, Thank you. Yeah, it's a full-time course. So obviously it is hard to fit jobs around, but the students have answered that really well. Um, so there's a couple of questions which I can answer about the ratio of applicants to places and how many people get on the course. So typically we get around 100 applica applications each year and that's for about 27 to 30 max places on the course. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a, an idea of kind of what the competition is in a way. Um, and we've got a question from Evie about what do most students do for accommodation? So I wonder if Felix, you want to talk a little bit about how, how you got accommodation? Uh, yeah, um, I actually knew Maisie before um, we started. So uh, Maisie actually reached out to me and asked if I wanted to move in with her and her flatmates who were all third years. So I was lucky in that aspect that I managed to find um, a place so quickly, but um, lots of the other people in my year, we, we were all in contact before the term started by a few months. So anyone who had um, decided they were going um, were put in contact by the degree staff. Um, and everyone basically just asked, like, who wants to live with me? Um, I can get this house here and then that's kind of just how it happened um so sometimes you might end up forming some pretty volatile relationships with people just because you didn't actually know them and then you end up moving in with them but it all gets solved by the end of first year because then you find out who you actually like and can move in with but I love Maisie and them <laughs> I wasn't saying that because <laughs> because we don't get along <laughs> Right. Thank you, Felix. Yes, we. I mean, we try help and guide you as much as possible with accommodation. Obviously, some un well, bigger universities have like assigned halls of residence, which we're just too small for that. So students get house shares usually in and around London. Um, but we, we do try and support you as much as possible with that. And I think Lucy wants to add to that. So, throw in. so the other thing that's really good, especially like Joanna said about the Facebook group, is not only can you talk to people from your new year, but also there's reps on there. And so people who are living in houses with second and third years who are moving out will advertise for any spare rooms and stuff like that. So that's another really good way that a lot of people can find a room. Thank you. So there's a question um, here for from Veronica. If you are living in a country that is a member of the EU, do you have to pay a full school fee and how much? So that's kind of coming under the, the Brexit category. It really depends if you're living in the EU now and you're not covered by any withdrawal agreements, so you haven't applied to the EU settlement scheme, it is most likely that you're gonna be classed as an overseas fee student. We'll obviously check that with you. So I think maybe it, cause it's, there's lots of individual cases here, but 
more likely now you're going to be an overseas fee student, which um, the fee brackets are different. So a home, home fee for UK, mostly UK students is £9,250. And then the overseas fee is £17,930. So obviously it is quite a big difference. But if you're not sure, um, I suggest you, you drop me an email and I will check that with you. Okay, hopefully that answers your question as best possible. Okay, there's a question from Evie. If you don't get in this year, can you reapply next year? And the question is absolutely yes. And if you apply the next year, you also don't have to pay the application fee again. So that's a nice, easy question. Uh, a question from Sophie. How many students do you have in each year? I wonder if um, Martha, do you want to answer that question? <laughs> uh yes i do um ooh, okay so it's this is uh you're testing me it, i think that's 18 in the, the ba there's 24 in the 52 and there's 21 in, in now have i got it wrong michaela will answer this question <laughs> uh, close 24 fd ones um 20 oh i don't know i can't remember now for fd twos i think it's 22 and then 17 b8s well yeah. done michaela good you. Right. i'm just seeing if there's any more hand raises so darcy i think you've got another question uh yes yes i do actually i have two <laughs> can i squish them together and try to make them short yes of course yeah okay um first off uh i know the apparatus just like apparatuses that you currently have on campus would the school be willing at all to get a new apparatus on campus if a student was like interested willing to provide or help pay for it and if it didn't take up like a huge amount of space like I'm thinking Spanish web or aerial chains so some sort of thing that wouldn't be a big space discipline but completely like new to the school would that be available I wonder Adrian would you like to answer that question yeah, so um, in short, the answer is yes. However, I think what would need to happen during the, if this was kind of happening in the first year, what we would need to ascertain is your um, capacity to do that discipline. Um, so what we would normally do is we would look at the associated disciplines that kind of relate to that new one that you were thinking about and we would start with that first during the specialization process. And then the discussion would happen around kind of whether change or washing trapeze or, or whatever was, was appropriate. Cool, cool. Thank you so much. And then the second one is pretty short, but um, are there any coaching or like teaching opportunities for students that are in the college program? Like, are there, ed I know there's younger classes in the same school area, but would someone in the college program be able to teach or coach anything at the school or are there any like gymnastics or aerial teaching opportunities around the school? Do you um, want me to take that again? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So yeah, that, that actually, that does happen where students, um, so periodically the National Centre um, do um, recruitment drives for other areas of the school, um, other areas of um, the National Centre. And yes, you could absolutely apply to be a teacher on the youth programme, on the CAT scheme. Um, quite a few of our students have done that. Awesome, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got a question about with COVID, how will training things like doubles trapeze work? And if you don't come to the course with a doubles, partner do, do enough people want to do doubles that it actually works out so that's a really good question and I wonder if Martha is the one for that finally um I'm actually specializing in doubles trapeze so happily happy happy to have this question and I'm always looking for new doubles partners so hooray for that so yeah obviously um sometimes we have people coming together as a pair sometimes two people are just interested in doing doubles trapeze and we kind of help them to work together we've had not millions of pairs but every kind of third year or so we get either a hand-to-hand -hand pair or 
a doubles trapeze pair, which I'm always happy about. But you're completely right. It is very difficult in the COVID moment. And actually this year, I haven't had to tackle this head on because we haven't really had anybody wanting to work together. Um, I did have a plan in place for sort of trialing this. Um, so it wouldn't be like completely out of the question, but I, I would have to take it quite slowly and we wouldn't be able to say, oh, you try working with that person and then you try working with that person and then you try working with that person because obviously with what we've got in place at the moment, it wouldn't quite work. But if two people were quite keen on sort of trying it together specifically, then I would do everything that I can to try it out, yes. And I'd be very thrilled if we did get another doubles pair, of course. I hope that answered the question. Thank you. So there's a question about um, if you're accepted into direct entry of year two, are there things that might be found more difficult than if starting in year one? And also in year two, are you solely working on your chosen equipment or will you still be able to work on other disciplines still? So I think, um, Michaela, I wonder if you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so it's not, it depends, I would say. It, it's person, we have had um, direct entry into different year groups before. Um, not, none of our reps are, are, are they? I would say that what um, uh, Felix touched on is just getting to know the group really. Um, ooh, oh, sorry, my computer went black. <laughs> um, just getting to know the group um, and fitting in. Um, that I imagine that it can be difficult sometimes. Um, but we have had students do it and they're okay. <laughs> so um, that would just be a challenge. Um, uh, obviously, if you're coming in the second year, you would have specialized already in your chosen discipline. So you would be on that. But generally, there is an opportunity to do, you can only um, be uh, have one discipline, but you do have the opportunity usually <laughs> um, to uh, train on something else if you want to. So if you um, were a... Uh, you wanted to do some hand balancing. Uh, if you're a trapeze artist, obviously you can go and do that. That's fine. And there's opportunities to independently train. Um, it, it, and it would de depend. I mean, if you wanted to do something that we couldn't offer or we didn't have the space for, we would have to negotiate that. So um, was that enough? Was that, was that everything? Great, thank you. Um, there's a question, what, what is it like commuting in from the regular student areas? So I think you may be talking about commuting from different areas in London. Um, so I wonder if one of the students um, can come in on that. Um, Maisie, do you want to talk a little bit about commuting into the school? Yeah, um, London travel is expensive. <laughs> Uh, so a lot of the people on the course do tend to try and find accommodation that's nearby. Um, I think that's partly a financial thing in that it does just even out getting the train every day and paying a little bit more in rent. But also in terms of like energy levels, it's uh, definitely much more comforting to have a base that's near the school, especially during rehearsal periods when you're training till really late at night and getting up really early in the morning. Um, so recommendation if you can, live locally it does look a bit more expensive like straight up but if you can live locally I reckon it does even out in terms of travel costs. Lovely thank you. I'm aware it's half five so if, if anyone does need to go feel free to go I think I'll try we'll try get through a few more questions but obviously if you do need to go that's absolutely fine. Um, so there's a question here. Also, what's the ratio of students to big space training availability? How many students can usually study those? <laughs> so I think um, Martha or Michaela, are you able to answer that question? Uh, yes. I mean, this is, it's quite fluid, really. So it's not that we have this like perfect number, but if you can imagine that if a number of our students choose a single point like rope, uh, single point trapeze, hoop, you can obviously fit a lot of people in doing that. And obviously we can't fit very many people in doing sear wheel, for example. So at the moment we often have say four people over the three years doing sear wheel, for example, um, or teeter board is actually a bit less difficult because you have more in one block in one bay so it's kind of 
a negotiation between how many people want to do things and how much space we have. And we always try to make it work. We've got one at the moment doing trick bike. Um, that takes up quite a lot of space. So it's the, I can't give you a perfect number, but I can say that not everybody can do big space. So yeah, Adrian wanted to add to that, I think. Yeah, just to, uh, Martha's absolutely correct. I think the, the thing is, is if we already have, say a trick bike in, in year one, that's moving into year two, it's really unlikely that we would get another trick bike in, in year one because of the amount of space those two disciplines would take up in any period of time. And the same thing would apply to something like um, teeterboard. Thank you. Okay, um, Susanna, you've got your hand up. Would you like to ask your question? Yeah, um, you mentioned a couple times uh, the different performances and shows, and I know it's COVID right now, but um, considering it isn't COVID, what does student life look like surrounding performances and are performances kind of designed by the students or more the faculty? How does that work? Um, Maisie, I think you spoke a little bit about performance, but do you want to speak again? Obviously you were in an online show last year. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the the non-COVID show that I did in, in first year, uh, student life was pretty great then. We, um, we had an amazing director who was Paul Evans and he um, sort of, I feel like there's a lot of the time what will happen is you'll have a director or a producer or somebody who's overall managing it, but a lot of the time the content does come from you and the students and it's very much a collaborative process. Everyone sort of gets listened to, everyone has a voice and um, we quite often end up making things that we're quite proud of. So <laughs> um, yeah, it's pretty great. And then we have a party at the end, so it's lovely. <laughs> lovely, thank you, Maisie. Um, and we've got a question a bit about student loans, actually. Do you get a good student loan or do you find that you need a job to live in London with it being so expensive? So I wonder if, Stevie, do you want to talk a little bit about student loans and then maybe one of the students can talk about London being so expensive? <laughs> oh, we can't hear you, Stevie. Yeah, no, you missed the best thing. I said the best thing ever. <laughs> Um, you, as long as you're eligible for a student loan, uh, so you would need to be a UK student, you would need to be new to higher education, um, and uh, there's some other requirements that I can't quite remember, but you will get the full cost of the course, so the 9250 per year will be paid by the student loans company, and then you would pay that back incrementally once you're earning over a certain amount of money. Um, I think the last time I looked, it was earning over £20,000 a year. Um, it, so, so that's when you'd start paying it back. You will also um, should be eligible for a maintenance loan. So that will um, give you some funds. It can be anywhere between three to £13,000, depending on your household income and your situation. Um, but that generally comes into your account at the beginning of each term. It's split into three different payments. Um, yeah so you would probably get like well depending on how much you've got say you've got thirteen thousand pounds then you'd get four thousand pounds in term one and then at the beginning of term two and term three and then obviously you would be able to use that to help cover costs for rent um and you can speak to myself or antigone for support in how to manage your finances um and then if the students want to talk about how they buy their food from sainsbury's never then <laughs> please do <laughs> Um, I like I get an okay student loan, but I, I pretty much everyone's in the same boat where no one quite has enough money to live in London, but everyone does, um, and you just develop little kind of like little tricks, and you find out what foods are cheapest. You find out what's the cheapest way to get to school. You find out what the cheapest alcohol is. You find out where the cheapest places to go at night. You just get, you know, you get your head around it and everyone gets, gets there. It's, yeah. Lovely, thank you. Um, there's a question from Ellie. Is there a specialisation for contortion? Um, I know Michaela loves flexibility. Do you want to answer that one? Um, a, a plan, did she say? Uh, uh, yeah, there is. There, it could be. Uh, we have someone doing hand balancing and contortion who um, has just specialised in that. 
so yeah i mean you would need to uh be able to have a, a facility to do it <laughs> so uh, we don't you um that would be the main one of the main things um and it would be part of the specialization process and we've had contortionists uh, uh who have graduated previously so yeah Lovely. There's a question here from Liberty. Is there any way to get a travel bursary to help cover the costs? Um, I'm not sure there's a bursary as such, but there is, you can get discount as a student for traveling in London. So you can get um, up to 30% off if you get a student Oyster card. So that's a good way of saving money there. Hopefully that answers. And there's a question here, what is the ratio of international student for the two year course? Um, I wonder, Stevie, do you want to talk a little bit about that ratio? No, <laughs> I don't like maths. I don't know what the ratios are, <laughs> but I'd say probably, um, let's go with like 20% might be, depending on how many you get in a year, obviously. Um, but on the two year course, we normally get sort of two or three overseas students a year that would would, would join the course at maximum. Uh, but then, you know, with Brexit, yeah. all the EU students are going to be overseas, so that might be much higher next year. Okay, lovely. So I think we've just about run out of time. I'm hoping I just about got through everyone's questions. If I didn't, um, I will do my best to copy them all down and get in touch with you. And also absolutely look out for our social media. We've got some student takeovers coming up. And I think as part of that, there's gonna be another chance for you to be able to ask them questions. So do um, look out for that. Hopefully you've all been on our YouTube channel today and you've looked at, through all our videos, but if you haven't done, please do go there. There's lots of really exciting content um, for you to watch. And really, that's that's enough from us. So thank you all for coming. It's been lovely to see so many faces um, and have a lovely evening. Go eat some dinner. <laughs> thank you very much, everybody.